Welcome to Sailing Avanti. We are Gerard and Jacqueline sailing our 41 foot monohull Avanti around the world from Cape Town, South Africa. We're currently in Panama near Colón and on the hard working to get Avanti ready to cross the Pacific Ocean for our longest passage to date. Today I'm taking out the roof liner or just one part of it. So our tricolor stopped working on the Atlantic crossing the navigation light on top of the mast. So we've only had the ones at deck level, which I also had to fix the port light one, but they are working. But yeah, I want the tricolor on the mast to work. You can see it further and it's a backup. So I'm just going to pull new cables as soon as we're off the hard. Uh, I need to go up the mast and rewire it. But I just want the cables to be through so that I don't have to uh, yeah, take the roof liner out when we on the water. Get it done today. It's raining so it's kind of an inside job day today. The other thing we're looking for is leaks. Um, we do see on the roof lining these little droplets um, that showing that there is a little bit of water coming through. So Gerard spraying water on the deck while I see where it's coming from. I got it! Found it. We managed to seal the leak and also pre-pull a cable from the switchboard up to the bottom of the mast for the tricolor. A few days ago we went through the canal with another boat, a steel boat, and um, the tension on the lines got quite hectic so we had a bit of a the scary moment where they've got steel fair leads so we've got fair leads that sit on the tow rail and that goes to the, the cleats but their fair lead was welded onto their tow rail and it snapped off when the big cargo ship in front of us started the engines and that created quite a lot of turbulence um, in the water and yeah that one snapped off so coming back to Avanti, we, I just checked, we sh you should actually have a, like a backing plate in your cleats, but we've got a solid GRP deck. So if you have a sandwich deck, the, I think the backing plate is more important. The back cleats actually have quite big, uh, like massive washers on them, but these front cleats only have a eight or four 8mm bolts and these uh, slightly oversized washers. So I'm taking that off and I'm going to put in thick and uh, oversized like body washers so that it just spreads the load in the deck so that hopefully we don't rip anything out of the deck going through the canal. We have to reseat uh, or rebed our um, the big hatch in the in the V-berth where we normally sleep. <clears throat> so it's been leaking a little bit not that heavy but just to be annoying and yeah the previous or the original boat builders didn't really think that you would have to take this hatch out so where the bolts go through the deck and it's it's bolts and nuts so it's not a screw it goes behind this wood um, that's covered by these um, ceiling board covers but to get to the nut you can't go through this gap so I have to chisel out a piece of wood for everywhere where there's a nut so I've started with it this side you can see the holes where I need to get access to the nuts but there's a lot of them so it's a lot of chiseling and uh, it's making a big mess so after that we'll be able to get to the nuts and hopefully take out the hatch and do the sealant just around the perimeter so that it sorts the leak out Yeah, so I've chiseled all the wood out so now it's taking the bolts and nuts out but it's like performing brain surgery uh, so in Panama there's only there's no metric bolts and nuts 
and so it's hard to find spares it's all american sizes so these nuts are behind these this wood so i need to make absolutely sure i don't have so many spares so i need to i've rigged up a spanner with insulation tape so that the nut falls into that when i take it off then there's a small little washer that i also need to get out and then there's a bigger washer that's sticking to the deck so i need to pry that out and take it out with like a thin nose pliers so, so far i've done one side and i've not managed to lose one of them but there's still three sides in total 28 of these bolts and nuts so it's a really tedious job to get them out and to make sure i don't lose them because then uh, yeah we won't find any uh, So it's been a mission getting all this old sealant and glue uh, out between the frame, the hatch frame and the fiberglass, but I think it's loose, so let's see if it picks up. Yay! It's out! Now the fun starts to clean all of this up, uh, to get all the old sealant off so that we can get cleaned up and the new sealant on. Success! Gerard has been spraying water on the hatch for a while now and there's nothing coming in so really happy with it. Now we just need to put the panels back and we've got one more hatch to seal before we're ready to go back into the water. The last job before we launched Avanti back into the water was to fix one of the smaller hatches that had a crack in it. So I just glued it with epoxy and this seemed to be working. After 16 days on the hard, the day finally arrived where we could launch Avanti back into the water. It was a little bit nerve wracking because I serviced all the seacocks and we didn't really want a leak at this stage of the game. If we do discover a leak, it would mean hauling out Avanti again and paying quite a hefty fee for the crane as well. We've just put Avanti back into the water basically. So we did service the seacock. So the first thing that I normally check and quite quickly is if there's water coming through the seacocks. These three at the back seem quite dry. So if there's a small leak, it's not an issue. You just don't want a lot of water to gush in. So I just need to quickly check the others. And then also we removed and reinserted the boat, boat speed sensor. So just checking that there's no, no water coming in there, but all looking good on this side. We finally have a better selection of Panamanian beers. So previously I did the Balboa and I must say I forgot to mention in that beer tasting that they use only renewable energy in the production of their beers. So I must up the rating to a seven and a half out of ten just because of that. That's really well done. The next one we're tasting in Panama is just called the Panama. So this is apparently the most uh, famous or popular beer in Panama. It's also a lager. It mostly we've seen them in cans. They are 355 ml cans, so not the small Eastern Caribbean cans with 4.4% of alcohol. So now let's see how this one tastes. It's definitely a lighter lager than the Balboa. The Balboa is much more malty. And these guys are not just on renewable energy. Um, so not really a special lager at all. Easy drinking, um, refreshing when it's cold. So yeah, I think there's nothing special to say about this one, but it is um, Panama's classic lager, as you can see on the can. And I think if I have to rate this one in terms of cost, taste, um, then and the size, then it's probably 
a 7 out of 10 and these do um, the beers in Panama is way more expensive than the beers in Colombia and yeah in the restaurant typically when it's happy hour you pay a dollar 75 US dollars for these beers and we actually haven't bought beers in the supermarket yet so we'll have to check the prices there cheers Jacqueline hoisted me up the mast today for some jobs we have to do. The one is to basically fix the tricolor and I suspect I need to pull a new cable. Other jobs are just to inspect the rigging and also to replace the two masted spinnaker blocks. Nice view from up here, a little bit windy and not my favorite place to be on the boat. I've removed the tricolor cable that runs up the mast all the way to the tricolor light that sits on the masthead and I pulled a new cable and I've terminated that and the light works um, so the symptom of the tricolor was that it uh, it worked but when you switched it on sometimes the breaker would trip so I thought there was a fault in the cable um, and yeah it's probably a good thing that when I pulled out the wire I actually saw um, that there was some portions of the cable where the insulation is completely missing like you can see the so the cable that it's a tinned cable it still looks okay but the insulation is completely missing so it probably shorted against the mast which is um, which is grounded to the battery negative so yeah these are there's quite a few spots of that surprisingly it's weird um, and I see that the problem in South Africa is in Cape Town at the moment you're only getting tinned wire in silicone with silicone insulation um, although it's good for high temperature the silicone insulation is very soft so um, you, you we used to get tinned wire with PVC insulation which the PVC is a lot harder and more rugged but this um, silicone is very soft so you can see I can basically pierce it with my nail and the insulation comes off so it's not a very rugged cable um, that's a pity that we we can't get anything else from a supply in Cape Town but uh, yeah this is what we have this is what most of the people put in their masts and this is also the only new wire I had of this type that I pulled for the for the new light so not the greatest selection of cable now that we're back in the water we have a bit more time to explore the jungle that's right next to the marina we walked here many mornings with so many different animal sightings there are large abandoned buildings that date back to the years that the US had an army base here but when Panama took over the canal they were just left open and on this site you also find a zoo that you can still see the cages in between the bushes. It also had this amazing bunker that had me thinking back to our time we spent in Cambodia. The ruins that you see here used to be part of a United States Army base called Fort Sherman. It was constructed in 1912 to help to protect the Panama Canal. The black rock? Yeah, the black rocks are very common here. Yeah, this, this got where it's common black rock right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and we last trip we were out we saw this bird. Yeah. Yes. These facilities were decommissioned in the 1950s by the U.S. Army and after that used as the Jungle Operations Training Center to train U.S. and Allied Central American forces in jungle warfare. It was handed over to the Panamanian government in 1999 
and it seems like nothing much has happened since then. These buildings are now ruled by howler monkeys, quadamundis, capuchin monkeys and a lot of species of toucans. The Fort Sherman ruins was also used in the filming of the 2008 James Bond film Quantum of Solace. Thank you for joining us this week. On next week's episode, we go through all our safety gear to make sure that we're ready to take on the Pacific Ocean. Remember to give us a thumbs up or a comment if you enjoyed this video. A big shout out goes to our Patreons who support the making of these videos monthly. You can join them by clicking on the link in the description below.